Could just could you mind if I ask you a question? Sure. So, so one of the things that you said in answering why you weren't a Muslim was you talked about the historicity of the Torah, which is actually a fascinating answer. I, I don't know what you're how you've looked into the historicity of the Torah, but I would say it's demonstrably you can you can, it's this to be demonstrably um, not preserved. Let's put, let's put it that way. So let's let's give a couple of examples. So the the now. The text itself, in a few places, refers to the fact that people have tried to corrupt it, or that the text was lost for at least a one or two generations. So let me give an example of that. So if you go to Second Kings, and if you read through Second, this is when Josiah. Uh, King, Je King Josiah was, you know, he was having the, the temple repaired, and the people, you know, they were repairing the temple, and they suddenly these scrolls were found, and they read through this scroll, and suddenly realized, oh, this is the law. And what he what Josiah does in that is he tears open his uh, you know his 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 clothing and he sort of laments the fact that you know that we have been following these things for uh, you know ages and they were and I, th I think it talks about idols even being dismantled or destroyed to to go back to following of the Torah as it as it was. Yeah. And another example would be sort of Jeremiah eight eight, which talks about how can you say that the law of, of God is with us when so when you come across so there, I'm going to approach this in a couple of ways. I'm going to just lay it out for you a little bit. So that's an internal statements that talk about there the, there were times when the text was lost and times where there was an allegation even within the text of things being changed. Actually, but Imran, do, about... do you mind, Imran, can you actually read Jeremiah eight eight? Because I think it is quite profound. I've got it in front of me. If you want me to read it, yeah, if you don't I'll have just it. read from verse I eleven. Yes, yeah. from verse eleven. Oh, sorry, go on. Yeah, sure. Um, so it says as follows. Here we are. <laughs> How can you say we are wise? The Surah Hashem Etonu, and the Torah of God is with us. Ochein, um, Ochein doesn't really have a proper translation. It's the it's the part it's the particle there. Behold, it uh, behold for naught he has done this. I he's not he's done this for nothing. Eight sheker sofrim, a pen of false or lying scribes. Okay, so that was Jeremiah eight eight. We yes. were referring. So that was an indication of somebody complaining within the text that no, you know not. people. So sure. So you can you can come to the, your answer to that. Uh, but I was actually talking about uh, Second Kings uh, chapter yes. twenty two, where, yes. where the incidents of Josiah. So, I mean, if you, if I read from verse eleven, it says when the when the king heard the words of the book of the law, he tore his. This is after the law. The book was found. You know, when they were repairing the temple. He tore his robes, and then chapter verse twelve. He gave these orders to uh, Hilkiah the priest, and he talks about the, the other people. And it says, uh, "What was that? What was that uh, order? Go and inquire of the Lord for me, and for all of the people, and for all Judah, about what is written in this book that has been found. Great is the Lord's anger that burns against us, because those who have gone before us have not obeyed the words of this book. They have not acted according to all that was written down there concerning us." So this is referring to a, a text that they were required and it's called the Book of the Law. So, you know, we can just, you, can, you can say what that's referring to. That was lost for at least a generation or two, because it says that those who have gone before us have not obeyed the words of this book. And, and it's explaining that this was lost for at least a generation, let's say a generation or two, because those who goes before us. So we're talking about as a minimum 40 to 80 years of not having access to this text. Enough so that they're shocked when they come across this. So outside of living memory, I would say, because otherwise there would be people who'd say, actually, you guys are doing these things wrong because when we were young, we used to do these other things. So so for me as a non, and obviously I'm not a, you know, I'm not, I'm not Jewish in either uh, religion or in terms of learning and understanding the Torah. When you read this, how do you interpret this? What what does that mean for you in terms of historically the historicity of the um, of the pre preservation of the book of the law? Was it lost at that stage, or was that is that me misinterpreting that? It's it's a misinterpretation. Um, the, the 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 standard interpretation um, of these of this passage is that this is not referring to just any just any Torah scroll. It's talking about a specific Torah scroll. Um, there was a Torah scroll, as it um, it's mentioned already back in the end of Deuteronomy, that Moses was told the, the Torah scroll that he wrote just at the end of his life 
that he was supposed to put this in the in the Oron Habris, the Ark of the Covenant in the tabernacle. This was eventually put into the temple. And this was known as the Torah Hashem B'Yad Moshe, the Torah of God in the hand of Moses, because it was written by him with his hand. The uh, uh, the scribe Shaphan and the priest Hilkiah, they found this, um, well, Shaphan has found this, uh, no, Hilkiah has found this scroll, and he's found it where? In the in the house of the Lord, i.e. in the temple itself. He has gone in and he's found the scroll of, of, of Moses, the scroll that he wrote himself, and that is why um, that is why the great um, the great repentance drive is made by the king. Now, the fact that the fact that the that the text says here that um, just just at the beginning of that chapter that the king that King Josiah was somebody who um, sorry, if you go back to verse verse two it says he did what was pleasing so he did he, he did that was which was just in the eyes of god and he went in all the way of david his father and he did not veer right or left right how could it be that he was that, that we can describe him as having been somebody who was doing what was right in accordance with god if he had if he did not know what was right in accordance with god if he did not have these things in front of him already so obviously sure. josiah had these things and obviously the prophets at the time and there were prophets who lived at that who lived at that time um w w would have um w w would have also known and the fact is that over hundreds of years the Torah, the, the torah and the, co the contents of the torah will have been taught all over the country even if people were not obeying the laws obeying the laws does not mean they have forgotten the text it does not mean that they do not have the text so, and so, so this whole repentance drive that happens here is because He's found the scroll of Moses. Oh, I He's understand, Josh. You've, you've given the explanation. Uh, so th the problem with the explanation that I'm seeing, Josh, is that, and I understand yeah. what you're saying. Right in the beginning, it says, you know, how can you be right with God if you're not doing God's laws? Sounds like a reasonable statement, right? But the problem that you have is um, when, when, that, when that scroll that you're saying is referring to a specific scroll is being, is being read, this is when the shock and this you know we have the statement of the, the you know the, the robe being torn open and the, the priest is urged to go and 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 find out about god's anger against us because it says there's a specific thing great is the lord's anger that burns against us because those who have gone before us have not obeyed the words of this book now if yes, the text obeyed. was widely distributed and taught as you're mentioning which are you know that's reasonable i understand that position this this response from him doesn't make sense in the fact that he's talking about they have not acted, and it goes on to say they have uh, not not only have those who gone before us not obeyed the words of this book, they have not acted in accordance with all that is written here there concerning us. So this is referring to a book of law because it's called the book of law. Um, now that has not been adhered to by some generations of people, who's and I assume that he's referring to his forefathers etc now that those two verses that in, from one in the beginning which says you know he, he was right with the lord and everything else is in direct contradiction with the statement of actually we've been off of go not only us but even the people before us who preceded us are off of this um so although i appreciate the explanation and, it, and it's a it's a nice way of approaching it that it's referring to a specific sacred scroll that had a status of its own because moses's hands were specifically in relation to that peace be upon him this is um, evident uh, the ev the evidence that this was moses's scroll is the fact that when this story is retold in second chronicles it specifically calls it the scroll in the hand of moses I thought sure. I mentioned that. so so that's not a dispute josh so I'm not arguing against that interpretation. What I'm saying is the text refers to the information within the scroll was not understood or adhered to by at least one or two generations of people, according to this verse. It does now for me. For me, as a non-Jew looking at this, no, I understand. I'm not. I'm not. I mean, we can we can agree to disagree. We're not having yes. to. Agree. But what I'm saying to you, as a as a Muslim reading this, I what I see is one a that the the people were not obeying whatever was in that scroll because he talks specifically about have not obeyed the words of this book they have not acted in accordance with what is written here now if that's referring to the torah itself 
then I think the Torah, uh, the I mean the, the Torah from from Moses peace be upon him in, himself, then the idea that the, the information was still being adhered to, but it was a specific scroll that was lost, is it's at odds with the way that this uh, this king phrases this particular statement. And so I, I don't, ex although I need to probably look into this a bit more. But that was one. That was just one of the points that I was making. So we had the Jeremiah eight eight, which you know we haven't gone into, but we had this. The other thing I wanted to ask you was: Were there any times that in you you're, you're aware of that? Um, actually, I'll ask you a question before I ask you that question. What's the earliest manuscripts that we have in existence? Extant manuscripts of the Torah that we have. The earliest manuscript of the Torah written in Hebrew is the uh, is, I believe, the Aleppo Codex. How? Where does that date? From? When does that date from? The Codex is from the tenth century CE. Yeah. So that we're talking about how many years after Moses? Do you think that is? Uh, after Moses, that's somewhere close to three thousand. Yes. Yeah. Somewhere so. Close to so I would. Say, and and what? And any other? Me. Sorry. What? What would you say about the the, the Qumran scrolls, the Dead Sea Scrolls? What would you say about those? What? Are they, what? How would you refer to them? The Qumran scrolls were the scrolls of a uh, of a divergent sect known as the Ebionites, who lived in that particular area of Qumran, and uh, they there's so many copyist errors in the Qumran scrolls and so many grammatical mistakes, that so many things that um, that it's it's not to be relied upon. Sure. Okay. So now we now we are now we're in this position where we have a text. That if we were to if we were to uh, man, manually uh, look at the, look at the manuscript evidence for, there's a three thousand year gap between the original uh, writing of that text to what we have now. Now that's this is me going forward one thousand five hundred years and saying and writing a Quran and saying this is from the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, because that would be the three thousand year gap. Now I would say that there, that there is some question about how do we bridge the one the three thousand year gap between your earliest manuscripts and the actual uh, writings that moses would have written how how do you is there an oral tradition that you refer to or you can refer to yes yes we do have an oral tradition what, what's that oral tradition called um well it's it's known as masora which means tradition and we have um we have lists of people List of lists of rabbis, sages who have passed down the oral tradition, um, generation to generation, um, teacher to student, to student to student to student, all the way to, um, from Moses to today. We have these charts. We have these lists. Can I ask you about the? So that's in, that's really good to know. I'm really glad that there is an oral tradition. What, can you ask? Can I ask you about the Talmud? What's the Talmud? Um, so the Talmud um, is. Uh, is the shortest way I could put it is a commentary, mainly, on the Mishnah, and the Mishnah is a codification of of a sampling of the oral law. The, so, so this is this is a uh, this relates to the oral law itself. What was the need of writing that down? What what brought that about? And, and I'm specifically thinking about. The, you know the Babylonian exile. What, what, is that correct in my understanding? Because um, no, the Jews not were the Babylonian exile. Oh. Oh, it, it, it's a common misconception because part of the one. There's two parts of the Talmud. There's the Jerusalem Talmud and the Babylonian Talmud. However, neither of them were written during the Babylonian exile. They're both written during the Roman exile. It happened to me okay. that one of them was written in 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 uh, in the Holy Land in Jerusalem, and the other was written in Babylon, and so that's why they're called different names. But um, so they're both written in the Roman exile. The reason why they were written um, was because the the sages of the time felt that it was it was necessary since the the understanding of the Mishnah was written for a certain generation that had that, that had certain mental capabilities to be able to make certain deductions from the Mishnah. It was it, as memory aids for the oral law. This. Uh, the, the, this writing, the Talmud, would would be necessary in order to help people to understand the Mishnah um, and to and to remember the oral law. Um, the the Mishnah was written um, once again in order that 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 um, that these things should not become forgotten, 
because they were worried now that they were in exile that these would end up becoming forgotten um and um they uh, and so they wrote it in these uh, in this riddled type of way in very shorthand language um, because there's actually a prohibition against writing down the oral law so they wrote down um uh, like a code almost um in what we call the Mishnah, um, where you can deduce the oral law from that. But these deductions were, 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 were once again, that people f thought these deductions sure. would be too hard for people so, to understand. So you said, I really appreciate that explanation. Uh, so what you've, what I'm, and I, what you, because you use the word deduce the oral law, which is very interesting. So there are, from what I understand, there are, there are, so we know that there's this 3,000 year manuscript gap. We spoke about the, internal discussion about the the people not adhering to the book of the law for some generations during the time of king josiah um we have this um, exile in babylon um, and then also then there's an exile in egypt as well the for, which was obviously many thousands of years as well and moses peace upon him brought you know the, the the jews out from that you know alhamdulillah so the but during these times this is a time of great turmoil and from what we understand, and this is from what I've understand, and you can you can correct me if I'm wrong, that during these times, even the language of the of the Jews was lost to them to a certain extent. And we know that even now, when when the Jews have returned uh, to to Israel, and the, the 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 reconnecting with the language has come through trying to use other Semitic languages like Arabic to try and uh, bring back the wholeness of the Hebrew. So, what what I would say is. As a, as a Muslim looking at this, and, and actually what 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 EF Dow are planning to do at some stage as well is, we, you know, we're doing a historicity stream of the of the New Testament. Yes. We plan also to do something similar for the Quran first because we promised this, but we may change that order slightly. But the, of the Old Testament as well, because I think it's a valid thing. Now, I think I think it's quite demonstrable that the we can question, and I'm just going to put it sort of in a mild way. I wouldn't say anything more strong than this, but although I feel it's stronger than this that it's quite straightforward to demonstrate that, I mean, we haven't mentioned the Samaritan uh, text that we have, the Masoretic text and the different, we haven't mentioned any of these things at all. Um, we can get into those, but I think that's what our conversation has gone on for an over an hour now. But what I would, what I would say is that that's quite easy for us, for me anyway, for my limited knowledge to say that actually the, the, the way we look at the, the preservation of the old Testament is demonstrable, demonstrable that there are issues with it. And also the fact that the oral law at some time had to be um, almost written down to be able to disuse it because there was this concern about loss, which is understandable in a in a situation where a whole people have been moved, enslaved in another you know land, and and that happened not just once but twice for hundreds, if not thousands, of years. So I think that that's not really uh, for me. It's not really a, a, an issue in terms of establishing that. Now the question I have for you is, and this is probably maybe trying to get to the heart of the matter. If, if that could be demonstrated to you that the Torah is not historically reliable, what objection would you have to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, being a messenger from God? Would it, would it, would, and, I'll, and, I'll, and I'll lay a possibility for you, would it just simply be the, one of the reasons, the strongest reasons would be because of his ethnicity, or would that not be a consideration? Because of the sorry what? Of his ethnicity, ethnicity, or would that not be a consideration? No, it would not be a consideration, no. The, the the two considerations really that I have are the the truth of the Torah and the, is, there, is the question of the truth of the Torah and the question of the truth of the of 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 Muhammad's prophecy. Those are the two issues that um, that it boils down to for me. Okay, Josh, you know you mentioned uh, you mentioned the oral tradition. Um, and I think people in the comments have, have picked up on this as well. And I, and I was thinking about it as well, to be honest, which is that how many pages of the Bible were relayed, um, obviously depending upon the binding and the size of the words, but roughly how many pages of the, of, of the Bible would have been relayed in this oral tradition from rabbi to rabbi, rabbi to students? So the oral tradition is not really... Um, it's not an oral relay of of the Bible itself. It's an oral relay of the uh, of the explanations of the Bible that we received from Sinai from God um, via yeah. Moses. You see, um, this is not so well known, but Judaism believes that there were two Torahs given at the same given supplementary by God. 
It's the written Torah, which was written over the 40 years in the wilderness, as God dictated further to Moses. There's the oral Torah, which is the explanations of the laws and of the interpretations of the written Torah, um, which God gave to Moses. And then Moses taught it to his students, his students, primarily to Joshua, but also to the um, to to these, his other students. And Joshua passed it on to the seventy elders, and they passed it on to uh, Othniel, the son of Kenaz, etc., 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 et all the way till the rabbis of the modern day. Can I That's do my layman interpretation? Yeah, you sorry, just before that. So my point, Josh, was that the Torah you said was not memorized completely, and it was not passed on basically word for word that's effectively what you've accepted right no that's, that's not what i'm saying either because okay. the 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 written torah the way that we do it so we so it's always written as a, 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 a as a as a scroll so forget the books with the binding whatever the the, the main thing is 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 the torah scroll the safer torah and we have a we have a set of rules as to the writing of this of, of a torah scroll and a a scribe known as a sofa has to write letter for letter from the accepted scrolls from beforehand. Yes. <laughs> so basically letter, what, you're, what you're saying is that from the time of Moses, peace be upon it's him. It's not allowed to be used and it has to be buried. Okay. So are you saying that from the time of Moses, peace be upon him, that we had a continuous um, transmission of scrolls and there was no gaps from Moses right the way up to when the what we have today in modern text is that what you're saying yes really Josh yes okay well, uh, Josh well, you know what we, we I think we definitely will look into this because from our understanding Josh uh, and I and I mean this in 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 in, in the nicest way that I can say it but from, from from our understanding, that's really not the case. And I don't think that um, uh, biblical scholars argue that point either, where they say that there was a continuous chain of scrolls from Moses up to modern times. Uh, in fact, in fact, in, and, I'll tell, and, I'll, and I'll tell you why, Josh, because one of the things Imran just touched on, one of the things Imran just touched on, is that the very understanding of those scrolls, had it been the way that you're saying, and this explanation and this preservation had occurred, you wouldn't need to look at other Semitic languages, try to decipher what the, what the language means. Because that in itself is indicating that something must have been lost for you to now have to go to Arabic, which is another Semitic language, to try to interpret what some of those words and and what how they should be interpreted within the dictionaries, basically. The, the, uh, the, this, this is misunderstanding. This is not that. This is not something which which has happened. The the modern Hebrew language that has that was not developed by any religious Jews. These were developed by secularists. This was developed by secularists who did not believe in any of the in any of the things that I said just before. It was it, it was it was started right. by a man called Eliezer oh. Ben Yehuda, and he was somebody who ate pork on the Day of Atonement in public, in 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 Palestine as it was then. It, 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 these these people do are not. Uh, the, the, these people may have looked to other Semitic languages, but they were not. They are not. Um, they were not religious people. They did not believe any of this stuff. If people had uh, had believed in these traditions and had looked into our sources. There would have been absolutely no need to change the language. Uh, in I, fact, in in certain in certain yeshivas, um, these um, certain yeshivas, Hebrew has been spoken quite a lot, to be honest. So, just so I understand, Josh, you believe the Torah is the word of God, based upon your oldest manuscript being three thousand years after the event, and because you don't have that, you have oral tradition, which is interpreted by people who couldn't. Uh, write down or couldn't write down their oral tradition, so it was written in riddles. So they had to interpret the riddles first before they wrote it down. Is that correct? Um, as an over, very, very much oversimplified kind of. Well, that, that's what it is, yeah. Right, and, and so what is the measurement to know that to these guys? What's again? What is the? How do you know these guys deciphered the riddles correctly? There's because they wrote down a system as to how you're supposed to. As, as no, how do you know they got it correct? And then the next, 
So how did it work? Did like one person make a riddle up? And no, then that's... everybody in this scrolls that you one second, one second, Josh, please. I'm trying this is just layman turn. This is what I'm hearing, right? And then so so let's imagine the first guy who's gonna be the first one to write the scroll. Yeah, because he can't write down the oral tradition, because all you've got is oral tradition at this point. So it had to be written down in riddles, and then somebody read those riddles and said, Right, I think it means such and such a thing. Now, did the people that came after did they just copy that thing? Or did they decipher the riddles as well? Or is it down to one person who deciphered the riddle? Who deciphered the so, first riddle? Well, when we when, when I say riddles, so they wrote down if you if you ever read the Mishnah. No, but who so wrote the first you, one? It's, it's, Do you know who wrote sorry. the first one? Who wrote the first Mishnah? The Mishnah who, was yeah, who wrote the first who wrote the first um riddle of the oral tradition? Yes. When I say riddle, I don't mean what you might be thinking when, when you're saying riddle. What I'm saying... I'm not, I'm not thinking like a Sphinx riddle. I'm just talking about it. you couldn't write down the oral tradition. So you had to write it down how? So you had to write it down in a way that people, by learning it, would be able to deduce what the oral law is. Right. And who was the first person to do that? Um, the first person to start doing that was, I believe, Rabbi Eliezer ben Horkanos. And when did he do that? Sorry? And when did he do that? When did he do that? So he lived during the time during the Second Temple period. Um, um a while before the destruction of the Second Temple. So how long is that after the event again? After the after Mount Sinai. Yeah. So that's two thousand odd years or something. Right. So You've got 3,000 old manuscripts of the Torah, which is based upon a 2,000-year-old... Uh, is it 2,000-year-old? Yeah, yeah, isn't it? 2,000-year-old um, deciphering of uh, a riddle. Just trying to understand it. Just trying to understand it. And, yeah. and you said something else earlier that I think you're mistaken when you talk about the Qumran Scrolls. Who did you say mm -hmm. wrote the Qumran Scrolls? The Ibionites. No, they didn't. You're wrong. It was the Essenes. That's the and you begin with an E. Sorry. Well, do you know I the difference getting, between the Nights and the Essenes? I always get the two confused. I know that I, because they begin both begin with an E. I always get the names confused. Well, do you know the difference between them? <laughs> yeah, the Essenes were the were, were the separate group in those times. I I forget. No, you, you called you called the authors of the Qumran Scrolls heretics. Yes, e Essenes. Sorry. Why, why I, were the Essenes I heretics? Names. I got the why names. Why were the Essenes heretics? They believed in um, in various um, very various perverted doctrines of um, of who God is. Um, they did not accept the. Uh, they did not accept the. Well, you have no standard to measure it against. The standard is the accepted standard. The the the, the idea. No, no, no. You 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 you've created a standard based upon a three thousand year old text and uh, a two thousand old uh, interpretation of a riddle. But the Essenes were the. Do you know who the Essenes were? Why, why, yes, they, 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 they were a split off group at the same why? time. Why did they split off? split off? Sorry? Why did they split off? Do you know the history of them? Or is this something you told as a kid? Go, 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 go on, enlighten me, please. Oh, okay. So when the Greeks conquered Jerusalem, they made Judaism uh, illegal and they made circumcision illegal. And they opened up gymnasiums in all of the towns. And you had to, men had to attend these gymnasiums naked so they could see who was circumcised and who wasn't. Yeah. And these were hardcore Jews who fled to the wilderness, to the desert. Yeah. To escape this brutality, this, this regime of the Greeks. Yeah. And it was there where John the Baptist came from. Yeah. The, the, the idea you're painting as some heretical Jewish group is like they were like zealots. They were they were like hardcore for the law. It's like it's like the antithesis of the way you're painting them, to be honest. But anyway, like the brother, brother said, please drop us your email. Yeah, I have, and, I have. It down and there's a there. video on EF Dower called "Who is the Brethren of the Israelites?" Yeah, it's only 27 minutes long. I'd love to see a response from you about it. Sure. Yeah, because you're wrong about that as well. Again, honestly, you're, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna realize there's so many things that you're wrong about. It's unreal, but you don't know it yet. But it's a learning curve, so don't worry.